Hi, good morning. Yeah, I'm going to talk about this uh, current uh, trend uh, buzzword that ev everybody hears uh, all the time. It's the Internet of Things. And the title of my talk is Connecting Sensors, Devices and Cloud Services with JavaScript and uh, Machine.io. Uh, well, a few uh, words about my background. I'm mostly a C++ developer, have been for almost 25 years now, but I also very much happen to like JavaScript. Uh, as uh, was already said, I'm one of the few people in this world probably <laughs> who combines C++ development with some web development. Most or a lot of my work is uh, for embedded devices and a lot of these devices uh, are built with C++, but they also have uh, web user interfaces. Um, I have also worked on some C++ frameworks, the Boco libraries, uh, which happened to include uh, a web server that I wrote. I'm working for my own company. Yeah, I've also done some uh, mobile programming for iOS. And uh, in 2013, uh, I started thinking about uh, maybe combining the Google V8 engine uh, with my C++ libraries. And uh, this is what resulted in, in Machina.io. As you can see uh, on this picture, I look uh, quite a bit younger than I look now. That picture obviously was taken before I started working with the Google V8 engine. Um, no, just kidding. Uh, V8 is great. I really like it. So what I'm going to talk about is my uh, latest open source project, which is called Machina.io. It's a modular open source toolkit for building embedded IoT applications that connect sensors, devices, and cloud services. Uh, from the word embedded in it, uh, you can see that this is targeted at devices, typically devices like uh, Raspberry Pi or BeagleBone uh, that you've heard about in the previous uh, keynote, but also professional variants of these devices that are used in uh, uh, industrial professional contexts. If you look at the typical architecture of an IoT uh, system or IoT application, you can see that uh, on the one hand, we have those devices uh, and sensors or sensor networks. These are basically the devices that interact with the physical world, world uh, measure some things or control some uh, devices like uh, lights or motors or whatever. And these devices uh, very often uh, run on small microcontrollers uh, and are not directly connected to, to uh, internet networks. There are some special communication protocols that you use there, modern ones like COPE or the, the wireless uh, IEEE 802.15.4 protocols, uh, some industrial protocols that have been around for a long time like Modbus or CanOpen, uh, also USB is used, Bluetooth LE is very popular, and also the venerable old uh, RS-232 interface. And then in the middle, you have the so-called IoT gateway, or it's also called uh, Edge device, which is usually a quite powerful uh, Linux, devi Linux uh, device. And on this device, you connect to all these uh, smaller devices and also on the other side to the different cloud services that usually, usually uh, take all the data from thousands or millions of sensors and do some uh, big data, machine learning, whatever, to derive some uh, business uh, intelligence, basically. There are a huge number of these cloud services available. Uh, I think it could easily be over 100 now that you can find in the market. And what these cloud services have in common, they usually have support, or most of them support two uh, methods of communication. First one is uh, HTTP REST APIs. The other one is MQTT. MQTT is a, a special TCP-based protocol that's heavily used in Internet of Things. It's a lot more lightweight than uh, uh, HTTP, and it's also uh, very resilient against uh, network outages. For example, if you have some device in your car that has a mobile internet connection, uh, there is no guarantee that uh, uh, this internet connection will be available all the time. Um, so this uh, protocol basically has some support 
for it. Yeah, and uh, on this gateway device, you can also, of course, do some uh, what's called today edge computing. So typically, you have some applications that preprocess, uh, aggregate some data. You can also have some web interfaces, some web visualization on that device, and so on. And then there is also, uh, for a lot of devices, you need to uh, combine them or integrate them with mobile clients. For example, you want to be able to control a home automation device from your smartphone. Ideally, you want to also be able to control your home automation device from your smartphone when you're at home at least, even when the internet goes down, like happened yesterday for a lot of uh, heard uh, users in Germany due to some uh, attack on, uh, on the routers. Um, so you want to support both local connections and also remote connections. Here's a basic overview of uh, Machina IO. It's basically based on uh, C++. In that regard, it's quite similar to, to Node.js. It's also using the Google V8 engine, which is also a similarity to, similarity to Node.js, but uh, this is basically where the similarities end. So uh, on the bottom, you have the Poco libraries, which gives you all the basic things that you need in uh, a lot of applications like uh, XML and JSON processing, multi-threading, uh, network protocols like HTTP client and server, um, and so on. Uh, then there are a couple of frameworks on top of it, like uh, remoting, which basically is a framework for uh, web implementing web services and inter-process communication. And there is also a framework called the Open Service Platform. Uh, some of you who have a Java background may be familiar with OSGI. Anybody here? A uh, few. Basically, Open Service Platform is very similar to OSGI, but for C++ native applications. And finally, uh, we have the JavaScript engine, which is uh, the Google V8 engine. And then there are some bindings between your JavaScript and the C++ word that I'm going to talk about soon. On top, basically, uh, what you see below the platform, it's uh, actually a very generic application platform. You can use it to build all kinds of applications, not just Internet of Things, not just for devices. Uh, the same platform has also been used to build uh, cloud applications. But on top of that, uh, you have the so-called IoT components, uh, which makes everything kind of an IoT platform. So you have interfaces that allow you to connect to different sensors and devices, uh, using a variety of protocols and technologies. Uh, you have implementations of different uh, protocols that you need, like MQTT or uh, legacy protocols like Modbus, Modbus, also support for Bluetooth LE, uh, Zigbee, and so on. Then there are a couple of uh, services that are useful for all kinds of applications, like WebEvent, which is kind of a publish subscribe uh, bus that works over uh, over uh, web sockets. Uh, we will see that later in the demo. And there is also a web based user interface uh, to get started. And the whole thing is open source under the Apache 2 license. It's on GitHub. Most parts are built uh, in C, uh, but some parts, for example, of the web interface are actually uh, JavaScript both in the browser side and also on the server side. Yeah, it's based on a uh, a lot of uh, well-known uh, open source libraries, uh, for example, Eclipse Paho, which is uh, one of the most used MQTT implementations, SQLite database. On the website, we use AngularJS, uh, one, not two, uh, jQuery, so old school jQuery. <laughs> open layers uh, for uh, visualizing uh, maps, basically and also the ACE text editor uh, as an online JavaScript editor. Yeah. These are the different uh, sensors and devices and protocols that we support, so all the typical devices like temperature, humidity, and light sensors, uh, GPIOs, uh, LEDs, uh, triggers and switches, uh, dials, rotary encoders, accelerometers, also, uh, GPS, GNSS uh, receivers, barcode readers, and so on. 
Then a couple of protocols like, of course, HTTP and HTTPS, MQTT, uh, co-op will be available soon. Co-op, by the way, is uh, basically a lightweight uh, protocol from concept very similar to uh, HTTP and REST, but optimized heavily for small devices and uh, low bandwidth networks. So it's all basically, instead of text, it's binary, but it basically uses the same concepts as HTTP and REST. Yeah, and a couple of other technologies. And you can also connect to different cloud services uh, in the IoT space. And now for a little demo. For the demo, I'm going to use uh, this little device here. Um, it's basically an open hardware uh, construction kit uh, from a company in Germany called Tinkerforge. And they offer about 100 or so different little modules that they all can connect together. And there is also an interface that allows you to connect everything to your uh, Mac or PC or, or Raspberry Pi or whatever. And the nice thing of this is you can easily start uh, hacking around with sensors and other devices uh, without having to burn your fingers uh, with uh, soldering iron. So uh, it's a very nice thing. For the demo now, I'm running the whole framework on my Mac. And when you start everything, uh, the first thing you see is the web user interface. We have to, oops. We have to log in. And once you log in, you see kind of a screen that's familiar to everyone who has a smartphone. Basically, there are a couple of different so-called apps uh, that are available. You can easily add your own apps uh, to the system. For example, there is a console which allows you to see uh, log messages. So for example, if you open another, another window, you can see uh, there are some log messages from the web uh, server coming to the log window. Let's keep this open in the background. Then there is also an overview of all the devices that are currently uh, connected to the system. Uh, so you can see we have at the top uh, a GPS receiver, which is actually a simulation uh, playing a pre-recorded GPS track. Uh, then there are a couple of uh, simulated sensors, uh, which is great if you want to play around but don't have any physical sensors yet. And there are a couple of Tinkerforge sensors like uh, ambient light sensor, uh, humidity sensor, uh, motion detector. So if I move my hand here, you should see it changed to triggered. Or if I cover the ambient light sensor, which is here. put my hand on it, then you should see it go down and back up. Yeah, then if you have a GPS sensor connected, you can see your current position on the map. And by the way, this is, as I mentioned earlier, a, a simulation using a pre-recorded track because obviously we don't have GPS reception in here. Then you have an overview of the MQTT connections that are configured in the system some basic system information, an overview of all the bundles that are installed in the system. Uh, so basically, the, the whole system is uh, based on a concept of plugins. So basically, everything in Machina is always a plugin, even the JavaScript engine, the web interface, basically everything. So you can really scale it down to exactly the subset of features that you need. A nice thing that you have is uh, Machina always supports the concept of bundles. Bundles are basically deployment units. Um, so everything that you install in the Machina I.O. is in a bundle. A bundle can contain uh, shared libraries. It can contain uh, web resources like HTML pages, uh, JavaScript files, style sheets. Uh, it can also contain JavaScript that's executed on the device, not in the web browser. And you can easily install a new uh, feature to your device by
dragging it, dragging a bundle from the file system to the browser. Click on Start. And what I now see here is we have a new application called the Real-Time Gauge. And if I start it, you can see I can turn that uh, dial here. And you can see that needle on, on, on that gauge here updated in real time, which is actually using a, a WebSocket connection between the, the server process and, and the, the web page. You can also do some more advanced uh, visualizations. For example, here I have uh, another demo that's basically uh, taking all that uh, data from the temperature, humidity, and light sensors and uh, writing it uh, into a SQLite database that's on the device. And then you have uh, another uh, web page basically to, to visualize the data from the database and also uh, the current live data again using a WebSocket connection. So, for example, if I cover again the light sensor, you see that the ambient light goes down to 30. If I lift my finger, it goes back up. So, how is uh, all of this being done? Basically, um, yeah, final feature uh, is uh, the so called playground. Uh, the playground allows you to write some JavaScript directly in your browser, then click on Run, and run that code directly on your device, which is a great way to try things out. You don't have to go through a lengthy compile and deeper cycle. You just open your browser, write some JavaScript code, run it. So for example, this uh, code here will basically uh, find the temperature sensor, get the current temperature, and write the temperature uh, to the console. So if you run it, you can see there is some additional output here. And it says the current temperature is 36 degrees, which comes uh, from, from not from the real temperature sensor, but from uh, the, the simulated temperature sensor. So it actually, if there are multiple temperature sensors in the system, this script will just take the first one, which in this case happens to be the simulated one. So how does all of this work? As I said, uh, down below it's all C++ based on the Boku libraries. Uh, it's using the Google V8 engine, um, which, by the way, uh, has some great features, most notably performance and uh, yeah, some other features that make it a bit hard to work with. Uh, for example, the API tends to change very frequently, uh, which has you play mostly catch up with every new uh, V8 version. Uh, also, the build system is a bit uh, strange, let's put it this way. So if you uh, just uh, get the source code for the latest V8 engine and, and build it, it will actually get uh, its own C++ compiler from some Google repository and use it to build V8, uh, which is definitely not what you want uh, in, in your project. Obviously, it's, it's very optimized for, for Chromium and Chrome. Uh, so basically, what I'm uh, going to do uh, in the future version is uh, just take the build system from uh, Node.js, uh, rip out all the parts that build uh, basically Node, and just keep the parts that build the V8 engine and use that one. So at least uh, don't have to struggle around with the build system every time new Node version comes out. Yeah, then there is remoting, which is also used uh, as a bridging mechanism between C++ and JavaScript. More on that later. The open service platform. And uh, the interesting part is how can you bridge uh, C++ word and the C word. If there are some of you who have written uh, plugins or extensions for Node, um, you probably know the uh, V8 interface. Uh, so you basically have to do a lot by hand. Uh, you have to translate between the JavaScript types and the C++ types. Uh, and you have to write your services in a very specific way. 
since in Machina we want to use both uh, C++ and JavaScript, we want to write certain services only once in C++ and use them from C++ and uh, JavaScript. Uh, an interesting thing about uh, Machina IO is the runtime model for JavaScript. If you know Node, you basically start a Node process with some JavaScript, and the JavaScript actually runs until the Node process ends. So there is no really a need to clean up. In uh, Machina IO, JavaScript <coughs> can come and go. So you can ch start a new script every time, and the script can end. And you have to probably clean up. Now, cleaning up behind V8 is not that easy. Um, if the garbage collector runs uh, from, from V8, you get a callback telling you to clean up your underlying C++ objects. However, if the script just ends, the V8 engine will just clean up all the heap and not tell you about which uh, JavaScript objects are still alive. So basically what you have to do is you have to keep track of all the C++ objects created by your script, and then when the script ends, uh, clean it up manually. It took me a couple of days to figure this all out. Um, so the other thing is, how can I write a C++ class and use it from JavaScript? Here is a little uh, C++ class, a very simple sensor abstraction. Uh, we have an event where we can register a callback function that gets called whenever the value changes, and some methods to get the value. Then we have a code generator that generates a lot of classes. And finally, in JavaScript, you can write something like on value changed, then pass in your JavaScript callback function, or uh, directly call the, the methods of a C++ object. And finally, I have a couple of uh, JavaScript samples uh, related to the demo that you saw earlier. OK, what you see here is. Uh, how to find sensors. So in Machina.io, every protocol, every sensor is a service, and all services are in the service registry. So basically what you do is you can search for services based on certain properties, like in this case, we search for different types of sensors. And uh, Machina also supports uh, the common JS module system. So basically what we do is we export a sensors object, object that we use later on. You can also find sensors by name. If you know the specific ID of a sensor, you can use that. You can also talk to a SQLite database. For that purpose, there is a built-in module that's called data. You can get some configuration data from a configuration file, then create a new uh, database session, get some more configuration data. And then you can actually use that to execute a secret statement uh, against your SQLite database. In this case, we create a table, and then, oops, uh, and then uh, we also define a, uh, a timer that periodically will read the sensor values and insert them into the database. Uh, then we also have the concept of servlets, so you can write a little JavaScript that's hooked into the web server. And in this case, we use it to write a little uh, servlet that returns a JSON with the most recent sensor values. We do some checking of input values to make sure there is no uh, SQL injection here. And then we just execute a SQL statement on the database, a select. We get everything into a uh, um, record set object, and then we go through this record set object, put everything into a JavaScript array. Finally, uh, we yeah, uh, put everything into a JSON uh, string and write it as response. And finally, you can also talk to web APIs using uh, the HTTP request object that's built in uh, into Machina.io. And in this case, we're using it to call uh, the Twilio uh, API, which allows us to send SMS messages uh, from our application. And we combine, can combine this together. Uh, in this case, we're uh, defining a callback function when the value of our light sensor changes and goes below a certain level. Then we send an SMS message uh, that the light has gone out. So thanks a lot, and 
I'll be around uh, until noon for any questions if you might have. Thanks a lot. <laughs>